Hello and welcome back to Whence Came You, a Freemasonic podcast featuring research papers and discussions related to Freemasonry. I'm your host, Brother Robert Johnson. Okay, well this week is a bit special in the fact that we have our first interview. It being the first, there is a notable audio quality difference since it is a recorded phone interview, but it is very much audible and I hope you enjoy. This week I spoke with Brother Joseph James, who is a brother in both the Scottish and York Rites as well as a filmmaker. He has three projects, two of which he has produced and acted in. Masonic Map, and his new one, which is Templar Nation, which has generated some great excitement in the entertainment world, and maybe, more especially, in the Masonic community. His films are always steeped in Masonic lore. I could tell you about it, but I think you'd rather hear it right from Brother James. All right, so this is uh, Wentz Camu. We're talking with uh, Brother Joseph James today. He's a producer and an actor. He produced or helped produce three feature films, and he's been in two feature films. And he's been in a bunch of television shows and whatnot. So uh, welcome to the program, Brother Joseph James. Thank you. It's excellent to be here, and congratulations on the program. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good thing that you're doing for Masonry as a whole. Hey, thanks very much. Uh, basically, uh, we share kind of a, a similar goal. From what I understand, you know, your goal is to draw some positive attention to masonry and uh, kind of shed some light on what we do and, and having fun doing the whole, you know, promoting it and getting the word out. So I guess we have some questions for you. So you're a producer and an actor. Did you become a mason first or did you become involved with, with film first? Yeah, well, it was it was interesting. It was, I was a Mason first, and that's much different than a lot of the producers and actors that I work with. Uh, a lot of them, uh, you know, started in high school or, you know, went to film school or, or whatnot. And uh, I actually, uh, you know, joined, you know, Masonry at a young age up in Portland and just got really active and excited about it. I memorized the Master Mason lecture and the Entered Apprentice lecture, so I was able to go around and, and see a lot of new people during their initiation. You know, joined the Scottish Rite and the York Rite and the Shrine and just really soaked it all in and, and was mentored by, you know, many, you know, great men that were two or three times my age. And what really got me into acting was going through the degrees. I just enjoyed kind of uh, overindulging myself, I guess you could say, as, as far as... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, not not just doing the degree, but really trying to get into character, especially in some of the uh, Scottish Rite degrees, where you you know it's a really elaborate play, and and so that that's where my interest in in acting came in. That's really cool. So you did did you perform quite a bit of degree work there in the Scottish Rite also? Yeah, yeah, we we conferred. You know, the we had a Scottish Rite reunion where we would confer the fourth, uh, the fourteenth, I think the twenty fourth, and the thirty second. You know, all in one weekend. Very cool. And so it was, um, it, you know, these guys had been doing it for decades, and so I was able to see the the process and see uh, some of them even, you know, go into character, quote unquote, instead of just sure. reading the lines and just going through the motions. And so um, I started getting involved with local filmmakers, and uh, that's kind of how my acting career started, just because I enjoyed it so much. So you said you got into Freemasonry at an early age. Like, how did you get into it? Yeah, well, I, um, I, I found out that my grandpa in New York was a Shriner, uh, and he had passed away a long time. You know, I didn't really know him, but I had received his fez and a uh, leather wallet with a Masonic symbol on it from my, my aunt. And so I knew that he was um, a Freemason, but that's all I really knew. And then I was doing research and didn't even really know how to approach it. I mean, you know, sure. within the last five years, there's been a lot more information online and stuff like that. But I was getting my car repaired and I saw a gentleman wearing a Masonic ring. And so I got the, uh, you know, the courage to be able to approach him. And I said, hey, I, you know, I'd like to become a Mason. And he plugged me right into a, a lodge there in Portland. And and uh, the rest is is history. So it was excellent and it was good to have, you know, so, you know, just him wearing the ring, you know, made a big impact on my life. It probably would have taken me another year or two to kind of figure out this this secret that we try to, you know, uh, display in, the, in my films that the secret of Freemasonry is not that secret. You just need to ask somebody to join. And, and it shocks me how how many people still don't know that? Yeah, I've been involved with several conversations through our Facebook page, and it seems like what's end up happening is 
I will get I'll get a, a private message from somebody living in England. And one of the one of the emails I actually got was a fellow who basically said, you know, all his life he's he's thought it was to be asked. You had to be asked. And he said he's waited twenty years and finally now that so much information is becoming available online, he realized, you know, he saw the our tag, you know, to be one, ask one, and he sees this and he goes, you're kidding me, I've been waiting 20 years to be asked, and all I have to do is go to a lodge and ask. It really seems to be one of the best-kept secrets still, even though it's out there everywhere. People just think that nobody's out there looking to find the answer, you know. So that's really crazy. So just going through the mechanic basically hooked you right up. Yeah, yeah, and I, and it's and it's really sad, like you pointed out, because I think that we would have a lot more members, and uh, we would be able to do so much more uh, in the communities with fundraising and and whatnot. But uh, you know, things are changing, and and uh, in the in two of my films, the first one was called Masonic Map, and and this most recent one is Templar Nation. We have been able to kind of portray, you know, the that element. So hopefully people watching them will, will at least do a little bit of research or just pick it up through the movie that, that you can become a Mason on your own accord. There's no... Because uh, I've experienced the same thing that you have, you know, private messages, and um, it's just some sort of misconception out there, and I, I don't really know how to fix it except through the media somehow. seems like that's the best way to do it, especially with... Social media is saturating everything. The, the easiest thing to do is to just say, "Hey, you gotta ask." And uh, I think that's a, that's another thing that the fraternity uh, in Freemasonry has above a lot of other things is that I don't personally know anybody who's actually gone into a lodge with a buddy. Everybody I know has had to basically uh, just have the courage to go in by themselves. And uh, I think that's where I think a lot of guys get scared off also. When you got into to film through that, you said you started going through uh, with the Scottish Rite, and uh, you got involved with the degree work, and you kind of got into acting and all that. How do you think masonry is, is portrayed in, in today's films versus, like, uh, our, our Valley of Chicago held a film festival, and they, they put out three movies, and what they would do is we'd all watch the movie, then we'd talk about the Masonic symbolism, and the second movie we watched was Murder by Decree, and that movie was kind of crazy. And anybody uh, listening has, has seen that movie. It kind of portrays Freemasons in a little bit of a darker light that we would cover up a murder. And in this movie, you know, it's Jack the Ripper. And then we have uh, somewhat like of a – in the new movies, we have National Treasure. So – do you find inspiration in the older movies, newer movies? What's your thought on that stuff? Yeah, what I did is I had just had my first son, and I picked up uh, my wife and son. We loaded everything we had into a giant U-Haul, one of those 26-footers, and we just drove straight to Hollywood. And I set up shop for a couple years there, and uh, that's where I learned how to how to make the movies, how to produce, uh, you know, and, and also, you know, the acting side of it. And that's when a lot of these movies had, you know, were being released, you know, uh, National Treasure, Da Vinci Code was big, the the book, and Sherlock Holmes. And, and yeah, I mean, in the in in some of them, the Masons they kind of touch upon it, or they they throw a little bit in there, or or they do portray it as uh, as something kind of darker. And so what I did uh, with Masonic Map and with Templar Nation. As I said, you know, I'm going to portray the Masons as they are, you know, just in a realistic way. And so with Masonic Map, the, the gist of the movie is that some college students end up discovering the Ark of the Covenant on a Indian reservation. And rather than turn it into the CIA, which is trying to kill them, they turn it into the Freemasons, to the Grand Master. And the Freemasons are the good guys, etc. And then in Templar Nation, it's the entire movie is about banded in 1307. No one really knows what happened to them, but it's possible that they made it to the Americas before Columbus, and that at the very least they've been doing positive things, you know, ever since they reorganized. And there's still a nice Templar organization today. And so I tried to kind of dispel some of those darker, um, you know, perceptions because I, I simply know that they're not true. And that's one of the most shocking things. In fact, I just called into a radio station the other day and uh, was talking about Freemasonry. And they said, you know, you're the first 
admitted Freemason that's ever called into this show. And they said, you know, so you guys, I guess you guys don't sacrifice babies, you know, as a as a joke. And uh, and it, I mean, this was a you know a, a national radio station that still had these these conspiracy people that uh, attribute all of these dark, you know, governmental control, new world order kind of conspiracy theories and. They're just not true. I mean, I've never seen any shred of it in all my years of Freemasonry. I've only seen positive things. Yeah, it's kind of funny, too. You know, you touched upon uh, in Templar Nation how uh, there's the idea that that, uh, the Templars got here before Columbus. And there's a lot of – that kind of really hits on a lot of, I think, ideas right now that are going around on on a lot of the uh, History Channel, Learning Channel, Discovery – uh, travel channel they're talking about some of the rune stones uh, Kensington rune stones and things like that, that they're finding in the Americas so uh i think you're going to have a lot of great success uh specifically with that movie i think i think a lot of people are really going to hit on that as far as the conspiracies and stuff it it really never stops we had this week's episode listeners it'll be last week's episode uh we talked about some of the masonic conspiracy theories on a website called AboveTopSecret.com, and some of the mm-hmm. stuff there is just ridiculous. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it's really good for a laugh. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's it spans from all 33rd degree Masons are a blood type of Rh negative, or I mean, it's just just bizarre stuff. So you've you've talked about uh, your first two films. So you said you've been a part of two feature films. And which which of these films are are you actually you're an actor in in two of them, correct? Yeah, I uh, I'm the executive producer of both the Masonic Map and Templar Nation. So you know I, I funded it, starred in in both of them, and you know uh, Masonic Map was my first one, and that was a, a good learning experience. And and then you know Masonic Map was so interesting that I was able to get Eric Estrada and and Richard Dutcher and a whole bunch of other guild uh, crew members to to work on Templar Nation. And Templar Nation is really on a whole different scale because I found a professional screenwriter who did all the research and he was not a, a a Freemason but he I told him I said you know I want a movie about the Knights Templar I want the whole movie to be about the Templar I want it to basically follow the the possibility that after 1307 a group of them took all their treasure to America and set up shop you know on Oak Island and were basically there and kind of reemerged as uh, the Freemasons with George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, and that they've, you know, had a, you know, a little bit of influence over the country ever since. And so, the uh, uh, that's what Templar Nation is all about. And it was it was just incredible to work with um, Eric Estrada. He plays a modern day uh, Knights Templar who discovers where the uh, the truth of, of where these free, uh, Templars have been and, and what they're doing. And he uh, is murdered uh, and, and by a group called the Plaga, who are still, um, who are an active group, who were part of the original group that the Pope sent out to kill them in the first place. And, you know, obviously they didn't finish the job. So it's kind of this centuries-old feud where they're trying to kill off any remaining Templars, and Eric um, has found the truth and the light, and he uh, leads other people to it. And so the movie uh, is getting uh, very good reviews. Um, We're we're having a worldwide um, release sometime within the next couple months, and I think that both Freemasons and non-Masons are going to learn a lot and have a fun ride, and it it portrays the the Templars in a very positive light, so I'm excited about him. Anybody who's listening, you guys got to go to YouTube or uh, check out Joseph Chamb. The, the, the trailer alone for uh, Templar Nation is it looks like a wild ride. It looks totally exciting. It looks uh, explosive. It looks action packed. It looks pretty amazing. And I just I gotta say, man, it, it was really cool that uh, that you've been making these movies and and that Templar Nation is is I'm excited for the release. And the, the, your first film, Masonic Map, where can people see that? Uh, people can can order it. Uh, we, we have it on Amazon. They can order it straight from my website either way. And, and it's, uh, it's pretty interesting as well because it, uh, it has a lot of uh, Masonic elements to it. And, uh, and then the Templar Nation, um, once it's available, it'll be in Redbox and Walmart and Netflix, uh, you know, all those places. And I'm also 
working on my next one. The, the script is already done, and this one is uh, it goes into even more depth, uh, and, and this one focuses more on the global Freemasonic network, not just the Knights Templar. And so um, this one will be, we're filming it in March, and this one, uh, I'm really excited about this one because every film that I've made has, has consistently gotten better because I've learned from the, the people around me. And I mean, I'm only 31 years old, so, uh, I'm, I'm no expert by, by any sure. means, but I've, I've tried to surround myself with guys who, who, uh, who know how to make movies. And the gentleman that I've hired for this new feature film, he has, uh, directed 23 feature films over his lifetime and he's a he's a veteran you know los angeles director so he's going to take uh, this next one to even a higher level and i'm hoping that over the next couple of years some of the films that i put out will will draw in you know hundreds if not thousands of people who maybe would have never joined uh, the organization simply out of Mis misperception or um, you know misrepresentation of people around them who who try to deter them from it. Absolutely, I think uh, I think what you're doing. I think these films are really going to open some eyes. I think uh, people are going to have a good time watching them. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing then is we're going to put. Uh, you guys can all find a link to uh, Joseph James' website. It'll be on the, the blog, and we're going to put some links to where you can purchase and watch uh, the movies. And we'll be looking forward to your your next new one after this. I'm sure it's going to be a pretty exciting, amazing trip as well. So I just want to thank uh, Joseph James for being with us today on When Scheme You. What's uh, what's your website? Let's let's put your website out there so the listeners can uh, can get some traffic over there and check out your stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's www.templarnation.com and www.josephjames films.com and you know i've got a facebook page and and the whole nine yards on the social media and we just wrapped up all of the closed captioning uh for templar nation so it will be available in in other languages and we'll be selling it to you know the european countries and the, the south american countries and even over in asia so uh, there's going to be no limit to to who will be able to watch it and understand it, and I'm hoping that uh, you know uh, Freemasons from all over the world will will be able to share it with people because it's it'll it's PG-13. I mean, it's so it's family friendly. It's it's there's a few sword fighting scenes and some action scenes and stuff, but nothing nothing really to worry about. So it's something that a whole family could sit down with, or a Freemason can sit down with his wife and have fun for you know an hour and a half and enjoy a good movie. So that's what's good. We're heard in 126 countries, so anywhere you are in the world, you got to check out josephjamesfilms.com and and uh, check out the new movie as soon as it drops, and we'll be anxiously awaiting it. Excellent. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Okay, thank you very much. So again, our thanks to Brother James and his family for taking the time to hang out on the show. Next, I have to mention our Android and Apple application, which lets you stream the show rather than syncing it. Wait, you say, I can stream already because it's on the Apple Podcast channel, or I listen to it streaming from the Flash player. Well, this is a little different. You see, when you buy the app for 2 bucks, you get access to the bonus features, which are always a Masonic wallpaper, and usually the papers we read. If you want some additional ways to listen, there is, of course, the Stitcher Smart Radio app, which also lets you stream the show, but also delivers you personalized stream of shows, which cater to your interests. And when you download Stitcher, you use our promo code whence came you with no spaces, and you'll get streaming access, customized listening experience, and entered into a chance to win $100 from Stitcher Smart Radio. Now, I should mention that if you do this, Stitcher sends the show $1 to offset the hosting costs of audio files. So check those out. This week, I don't have a paper because of the interview. However, there will still be a piece on the app for download, as well as a wallpaper. This week's famous Freemason is Alexander Keith, who was a Canadian politician and brewmaster. Keith was born in Halkirk, Caithness Highland, Scotland, where he became a brewer. He immigrated to Canada in 1817, founded the Alexander Keith's Brewing Company in 1820. He served as mayor of Halifax, Nova Scotia three times, and as a member of the Legislative Council for 30 years. Throughout his career, Keith was connected with several charitable and fraternal societies. He served as president of the North British Society from 1831 and as a chief of the Highland Society from 1868 until his death. 
In 1838, he was connected with the Halifax Mechanics Library and in the early 1840s with the Nova Scotia Auxiliary Colonial Society. Keith was also well known to the Halifax public as a leader of the Freemasons. He became a provincial Grand Master for the Maritimes under the English authority in 1840 and under the Scottish Lodge in 1845. Following a reorganization of the various divisions in 1869, he became Grand Master of Nova Scotia. There are four Masonic lodges named in his honor. Moncton in New Brunswick and Halifax, Stellarton and Bear River in Nova Scotia. Alexander Keith died in Halifax in 1873 and was buried at Camp Hill Cemetery across from the Halifax Public Gardens. His birthday is often marked by people visiting the grave and placing beer bottles and caps on it, or less frequently, cards or flowers. He has often been confused with his nephew, Alexander Sandy Keith Jr., who was a notorious Confederate agent during the American Civil War. Nova Scotian artist William Valentine painted Keith's portrait. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the new segment because I have several lined up. Anyway, remember to check us out on Facebook and follow on Twitter at Whence Came You. Find us on Pinterest, Tumblr, and pretty much everywhere else. I want to say thank you to everyone taking the time to do some good old-fashioned reading on the midnightfreemasons.blogspot.com webpage. A reminder, if you want to be featured on the Midnight Freemasons, send your article with a short bio and the word submission in the subject field to wcypodcast at gmail.com. If you're interested in doing an interview on the show, email me the same way, but type in on the subject line, interview. Remember, content on the Midnight Freemasons comes out three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Until next week, stay on the level. For whence came you? I'm Robert Johnson.